Welcome, Welcome to, to It's Stein. Stein. This may be the cutest medieval village that, if you're an English speaker, you've never heard of before. Join us as we visit this old town and marvel at the half-timbered frame houses, see the beautiful church, and look at all the sights in this wonderful town in the federal state of Hessen in central Germany. Hi, right, welcome to Edstein in uh, the federal state of Hessen. Uh, we are about 20, 20 miles or so uh, uh, north of Frankfurt am Main, and this place is such a cute little town. It has so many historic old half-timbered buildings from the Middle Ages, and um, I'm going to show you just a couple. But this is a town that's not very big. And honestly, I, I had never heard of it until maybe a year or so ago. And I started seeing these pictures pop up in my Instagram feed from Edstein. And I was like, where is this place? And then it turns out it's very near Frankfurt. So uh, very, very beautiful and historic. And let me just show you some of these old buildings we have here because uh, it's uh, pretty nice. So here's this one. And some of them, you can clearly see the year that they were built. I do not see the year posted. Oh no, I do. This one is from, I'll take that back. It looks like 1680. So this one's from 1680, it looks like. That beam. And this one is from 1449. Now, of course, it's been maintained and it's been renovated, but a lot of this, I have to believe, is original. I mean, look how that beam just bends in the middle there. That is it's pretty amazing. Going down this little alleyway here, hopefully I fit. It's kind of narrow. Well, I think my shoulders are going to rub for sure down here. Look at this. I don't know where we're going, but I saw some people. My shoulders are rubbing. Oh, I've been spending too much time at the gym. My deltoids are too massive. I'm too broad. Oh, so I made it through. We're coming down here. Got a little bit of graffiti here. Here we come. We got a lot of, unfortunately there's some um, some upkeep going on. And I say unfortunately because it's unfortunate for me today because I'm here and I would like to get some videos and take some photos. And of course the scaffolding is quite ugly. You don't want to look at it. But it has to be done. I mean, you can't just let these buildings sit here. Look how pretty this is. You can't just let these buildings sit here without uh, taking care of them. So. Yeah, it has to be done. And yeah, just about 20 miles away from the big metro city, metro of uh, Frankfurt. We're out here in this little, little village. All right, so I wanna show you something uh, about this building behind me. I don't see a date on it, so I'm not sure when it was, when it was built, but uh, obviously it's, it's pretty old, but we've got a touch of the very old, probably from the Middle Ages, several hundred years ago, with the very modern, because this old half-timbered house has solar panels, which I found very interesting, and I guarantee you. So, so this house, you think about this house, when it was built, um, there was no electricity, right? So, uh, so this house has, has made it through the centuries and being built with without electricity using candles for lights and wood for for heating and then it went through uh, electricity and uh, piped in gas or maybe oil tanks and now it's at the point in 2024 that it has solar panels on the roof so that's it's pretty pretty interesting to imagine what this house could talk about if they could talk. So just uh, 
a little add-on to that. The more I look at this house, I'm not quite so sure those are solar panels. I mean, obviously they are very modern, but it might just be window panes in the roof. I'm not 100% sure, but whatever they are, it does have a very modern roof, which certainly did not exist when this house was built, that's for sure. Mm. Mm, it smells so good. So we've got some pistachio and mon puppy seed, right? Pistachio puppy seed cake. Looks good. Looks like it has a little bit of um, marzipan on the top. And what is the cake? Ah. All right, I'm gonna show you something that's uh, fairly common. Fairly common. We're gonna lift the bells. Okay, I think they're over. Uh, something that's fairly common here in Germany is when, if you have something, maybe some clothes, maybe some shoes, maybe some books, maybe some furniture, something small that you no longer need, oftentimes people will put it out on their on their curb or on the sidewalk outside of their house. And sometimes um, they'll put a note that says, you know, you can have it for free. And sometimes, uh, depending on where you're at, uh, people will just set it out then, and, uh, and everybody kind of knows if it's out there on the curb that it's free for the taking. And so we've got some of that right here. And uh, we've got a sign that says, Zu Verschenken. That means to take with you, to give away. And we've got a little bit of, we've got a shelf, we've got a vase flower pot, some sort of a, I don't know, some sort of a bag, like a saddle bag or something, and like a silver, very important looking briefcase that you might see in a crime show or something. But uh, anyway, that's kind of interesting how Germans just put things out that, uh, that are still useful, but they don't need them or want them anymore, and they'll just put them out and anyone who wants them can come by and take them. If you look at these two buildings I'm going to show you, they have overhangs that stick out from the ground floor. And it looks kind of strange in some places. So a um, couple reasons for that. Number one, oftentimes the alleyways were very narrow. So to get horses and carts through, um, the street had to be wider. Um, so they couldn't build out. So then when they got up above, above where the horses would come through, they extended it out. All right, so we went to the tourist information office and um, I, I think I know why, maybe, not of a lot of, like I've never heard of this place before, I said, because um, I went to the tourist information office and they had all these little pamphlets and brochures and um, I was looking at them and I didn't see anything in English. So I asked the lady, and I said, do you have any information, uh, any information in of English? And she said, lighter nine. Um, so, you know, maybe that's why English speakers don't really know about this place because even the tourist information office doesn't give information um, in English. But uh, it really just keeps getting nice. I mean, it's, it's, I, I, we've been walking around for a while and I keep thinking we're going to run out of these uh, nice little, uh, half timbered houses but uh everywhere we go we run into more and more of them and they're they're really really cute interesting that on the on the main square um i didn't really get any footage of it but on the main square I have a lot of these old buildings and right across the main square like the two restaurants on the main square are both asian restaurants and i keep pointing out the um you know how times have changed between these old hundreds centuries old houses and uh, the modern technology that they have uh, but uh, also the the culinary experience you know 500 years ago I pretty much guarantee that no one in this town ever imagined that they would be that they could eat sushi or um, you know fried rice or whatever but uh, yeah just how 
our world has changed over the last hundred years. Okay, so we've looked at several of these half-timbered uh, old houses today that have been uh, uh, well maintained and, and, and refurbished. And behind me, I've got an example of a barn that uh, hasn't been refurbished. You can kind of see what they look like um, when they haven't been uh, maintained in a while. You still got the, the timbers, but the uh, outside needs to be refurbished. Uh, that's an old barn. I bet you that is an old, very old barn. So yeah, so here's an example of an old house and, and this one is in, uh, I don't know, looks like they've got some scaffolding so it looks like they're doing some, some work on it. But uh, we've got the bricks and then the half timber, the timber frame up there. And uh, it's just open so I think they're probably renovating this one right now. And it looks like this one is from 1706. All right, so this is the Union Church in Idstein, and this was built in the early to mid 1300s, I think 1330 to 1350, uh, as St. Martin Church. So it was a Catholic church. And then in the 1600s, after the Reformation, it was uh, it transitioned into a Lutheran church. Now, we almost didn't go inside because from the outside, this church really isn't all that spectacular. But I must say, inside, we were pleasantly surprised. It is really pretty pretty uh, impressive once you, once you go inside. And the thing that's kind of strange is that normally these churches, when they transition from Catholic church to Lutheran, um, uh, the Protestants would go in and they took all of the decorations out, all the paintings, uh, in their belief that um, churches should be pretty simple, places of worship. Uh, but yeah, this one is very elaborate on the inside. It has some very beautiful paintings from, I, I believe it was from the 1600s, and uh, some very beautiful marble work. So we're gonna take you inside and show you around, uh, but it is very impressive. All right, so behind me is the Hexenturm or Witch's Tower of Idstein. And this was built in the 1100s. So in the 12th century, that tower was built and it got its name because in the 1600s, and this was actually 20 years before uh, the witch's trial in, in Salem in the United States. So in the 1600s, um, like 39 people, most of them were women, but there were a few men, I think eight men or so, um, were put on trial as witches and uh, they were burned here uh, in this town, put to death by burning them to death. So pretty horrific. Their names are on a plaque out in front of the, the tower. Um, now, they don't really think that any witches were actually held captive there or anything. So I'm not really sure why that translated into calling that the witch's tower, but that's um, the history behind it. So witch trial right here in Idstein, Germany. All right, now it's time for trivia once again. And so last week's question was, when and why was the German wine road officially designated as a tourist route? And a big shout out to Margaret Simmons, 7143, who had the most complete answer. And uh, the answer was, 1936 it was designated and it was because um uh, to help the economy obviously to boost the economy um uh the the economy the wine sales had declined and it was a way of uh giving a boost to the uh wineries in the local area and to everybody else because people came not just to buy wine so to boost the economy so great job margaret simmons 7143 And now for this week's trivia question. So we've talked about the witch trials here in Idstein. So the question is, which city in Germany holds the record for the largest documented witch trial or trials? Which, which city had the most 
uh, number of witches that were tried in Germany. And so be sure to respond in the comments and the best answer will be highlighted in next Sunday's video. All right, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here with us in Idstein. And if you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to follow us on more adventures. And in the comments, let us know what is your favorite uh, medieval town? What is your favorite half-timbered village in Germany or uh, other places in Europe? We'd, we'd love to know what your thoughts are and have you been to Idstein? And if you have, let us know and let us know what you thought about it. So thanks for joining us. Welcome to Idstein. This is maybe the cutest little village from the Middle Ages, half-timbered town that you've never heard of. <laughs>